Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going over my autumn book card. I did ask in my community tab if it was too late to share with you all of the autumnal books I loaded my book cart with for the season, even though the season is halfway over. And you all voted that you did want to see all the books I loaded my book cart with. This is not a TBR technically. These are books I have out from the library and just books that I would like to get to soon-ish. Um, I'm keeping these books at the forefront of my mind with prompt-based challenges, whether that's TBR prompts or Becca's Spookopolathon, things like that. I'm filming in a weird corner and I feel like I look very washed out because my children are in the living room, which is where my bookshelves and my book cart usually are. So I unpacked my book cart and brought everything in here. So I hope that's okay. You'll have to let me know as I go through these books, which ones you think I should prioritize. We are halfway through the season. I'm not going to be able to read all of these and that's okay. Some of them will roll over into winter and others may just have to wait until next fall. That's enough rambling for me, but if you are new here, hello, my name is Emily. This is McGinnis Mama, where you will find mostly bookish content. If that is something that interests you, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Now let's talk about all of the books I have on my autumn book cart. I'm going to start off with library books. Those do tend to be more of a priority because I do want to like read them and return them so the next person can read them. I actually have quite a lot of YA books out from the library, but I have three adult ones. So I have Court of the Vampire Queen by Katie Robert. I had just seen this on like one of their little library displays and it caught my attention. Katie Robert is a spicy author that I have read from before and I thought a vampire smutty romance could be fun. I believe this is a collection of shorter novels that are actually on KU as well. So if I don't get to this before it's actually due at the library, it's really not that big of a deal. Every fall I get this out from the library and every fall I'm too scared to read it. This is the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires and I know there are some horror elements in this book that I think I'm literally going to be terrified of, <laughs> but I want to be brave one of these times. So every fall I get it from the library. Literally, this is probably like the fourth or fifth time and I still have not read it. And then I have It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I am trying to read a little bit more of Colleen Hoover. Um, I just want to be in the know. Um, this one and Heartbones are kind of like the top two next ones I want to get to, but these have very short like loans from the library because so many people are on a wait list for them. So really I should probably get to this one pretty soon, but I read her books really fast. Um, I know this one has domestic violence in it, I believe, and that's all I know about it. Colleen Hoover just writes like hard hitting contemporary. Usually there's a romance and usually I cry. Next I have the YA books I have out from my library. I have Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. I thought that this would be a fun, I think it's y, yeah, YA, not middle grade, um, queer novel with some scary elements. So I thought this would be a good autumnal read. I have The Silvered Serpents, which is book two in the Gilded Wolves trilogy. I don't know if that's what it's actually called, but The Gilded Wolves was the first book, which I did read recently and really enjoyed. And now looking at this, this might be, this is definitely more winter vibes. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but this is set in snowy Russia. This book is the first book was set in France. I also have Immortality, A Love Story by Dana Schwartz out. This is the second book in the love story duet. The first one is called Anatomy, A Love Story. This has like gothic historical vibes and I was really interested to finish out this duology. Would knock a series off my list. It's YA and a quick read. 
And my last library book I have out right now is Five Survive by Holly Jackson. I haven't read any Holly Jackson before and I feel like her books are perfect for the fall. I think this is a standalone thriller and I think there are six teens and only five of them survive somehow. I think there's like a car accident. I'm not really sure. Um, Red Kenny is on a road trip for spring break with five friends. Five survived and there's six of them. Um, I've heard that these are, you know, not people's absolute favorites, but a really fun time and a quick read. And I think I will really appreciate that. Now I have all of the books I own. Um, I just like pulled books off my shelves that I thought were autumnal. There's a lot of starts to series in here, which I'm trying to finish series as well. So that's a little counterintuitive. There's quite a few things on here that are on my These Books Will Self-Destruct and 23 Books to Read in 2023 list. So these are more priority reads no matter the season as well. But I feel like I'm over explaining everything for literally no reason. Okay, again, in no particular order, I have Hellfire by Muriel Pomeroy. This was kindly gifted to me by my friend Leanne off my Amazon wish list. This is a very dark, very spicy romance, um, and that's all I know about it. I have The Alchemist by Paolo Colo. This is the opposite of that. This is like a classic fantasy. It's very short. I have heard that it's very like enlightening. I don't know if that makes sense. And I had put this on my magical readathon TBR in April and never got to it. Actually, Wyatt chose this for me to read. And I think this is on 23 books to read in 2023 as it is so short. I'm not sure. I have One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. This was kindly gifted to me by Oksana, who is another social media friend. I'm so grateful to have made so many friends in this YouTube Instagram space. This is a gothic adult fantasy that I've heard really great reviews of and the sequel came out this fall. I have Red Rising by Pierce Brown. This will be a reread for me, but I read this in like 2019 and never continued the series. Recently, Rachel from Raven Haired Reader has been raving about this series, along with like the typical people that do, like Becca from Becca and the Books loves this series. And I have the first three books, which is like the closing of like there's what well, like one arc, if that makes sense. Like there's kind of like a trilogy and then is the next couple books a trilogy or a quartet? I'm not really sure. Um, I want to reread this and then finally continue on. And then I have Belladonna by Adeline Grace. This is so beautiful and I really wanted to prioritize reading this this fall, but I haven't heard good reviews of the sequel. And whenever that happens, I kind of pump the brakes because this will be like starting a series and then I will want to finish the series. And for some reason in my mind, I'm like, oh, is it going to be a waste of time if people don't like the sequel? Does that make any sense? This is one of the most beautiful books that I own. Next, I have Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. I have such a hang up on this book for some reason. I just can't get myself to start it. This is a fantasy standalone as of right now and I've heard really great reviews. I have this beautiful UK edition. It has been on many a TBR. Two books I'm going to share that are on my October TBR, my whole October TBR I'm not sharing with you, but I have Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. This is a thriller that I have the audiobook out from my library so I should get to it very soon, but I'm hesitant because it's quite long for a thriller and I think I've been spoiled on the ending, so I will get to this though. I have Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is another start of an adult fantasy series. Come in here then. This is also on my October TBR. As I said, it has a really cool magic system and I think the cover gives autumnal vibes. But other than that, I don't know if it's like set in autumn or not. I have Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This is often on a fall book recommendation list. Uh, this is just a duology involving 
villains. I have A Shadow on the Ember by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is on my 23 books to read in 2023 as well. I really want to continue with her books, especially since I own so many of them. And this is the next one I am supposed to read. And this has, you know, vampire-like beings, werewolf-like beings. That seems autumnal in my mind, even though I read those kinds of books all year round. King's Cage by Victoria Aveyard. I think this is the third book in the Red Queen series. This is the one I'm up to. I'm borrowing this series from my friend Rebecca, so I should prioritize continuing this series so I can return her books. I have No Rest for the Wicked, which is the second by Cressley Cole, sorry, which is the second book in the Immortals After Dark series. These are very short paranormal romances. I gave the first book three stars and I kind of wanted to read the next one, maybe two and three, and then if they're all three stars I can more comfortably unhaul the like 15 book series that's currently on my shelf. Two books that are on my These Books Will Self Destruct that I'm pretty sure are just going to be unhauled by the end of the year. I have State of Fear which, by Michael Crichton which every fall I read the synopsis and think that that sounds really interesting but Michael Crichton intimidates me and this book is very chunky and not in my usual genre. I've had this for years and years and years and have never picked it up so it might be time to let it go. And the same can be said for A Painted House by John Grisham. This gives To Kill a Mockingbird vibes which sounds like something I may enjoy or it might be too similar. I really feel no call to pick this up when I see it on my shelf so that's why it's on these books will self-destruct. Another book I got passed down by my father-in-law and has just been sitting for a long time. It's just not a priority and if I can't work it in by the end of the year it's gotta go. Another thriller I have The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. This was in a very old summer book haul that I reacted to a couple months ago so I pulled this out. Another one that became a movie and I feel like when people talk about the movie like when they come out it's kind of spoilery for the book um, so kind of similar to Gone Girl with this one. I haven't unhauled either of those because I want to read them. I just find it hard to find the motivation, you know? I have Kristen Hanna, The Great Alone. I'm borrowing this from my stepmom and I think this cover is very autumnal. I really do want to read this. This is historical, hard-hitting fiction. The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Again, something that just feels autumnal to me and I'm also currently reading Manacled by Sen Lin Yu, which gives The Handmaid's Tale vibes. And I'm just curious how the actual Handmaid's Tale is. I've never watched the TV show or anything. I have The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. You can come in here. Again, this is a book that might be more wintry. I'm not sure. Um, I feel like this is a favorite for a lot of people, but I also know there's a lot of people that hate this book, so I just haven't picked it up yet. We are almost to the end. Just three more books. I have The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This is an adult fantasy with a romance, with a queer romance, I'm pretty sure. Ew. Monster. <laughs> monstery children. I think this is going to be really cute, cozy fantasy. I have The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. I really want to read this series. I'm actually borrowing this from my mom. This is like fantasy sci-fi and I think I'm going to love it but I'm scared I'm not smart enough. I don't know if that makes any sense but so many people say like how complicated this book is and I don't know. I'm just kind of scared of it. And lastly I have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Another V.E. Schwab books. Actually I have a couple series from V.E. Schwab and all of them feel very autumnal in my mind. I don't know why. This is another adult fantasy that people love it or hate it and this is on my These Books Will Self Destruct as well. I'm really behind on all of those lists. So those are all of the books that were on my autumnal book cart. I now need to reassemble that. That was a lot of books 
and we only have a couple weeks left of autumn so definitely let me know which books you think that I should prioritize and which ones you think are fine to roll over into winter. Do you want to see this type of video seasonally from me? My book cart changes all the time as I read books off of it. I immediately kind of like fill the gap with a new book. If you enjoyed today's video don't forget to give it a thumbs up so that I know and I will see you in my next one. Bye!